collect your blood pressure. We're going to keep it as anonymous as possible. Number one. Walk through the live scenario of live fire scenarios, uh, meaning that the burn building and then the, um, the, the search and rescue. By, by law, we have to walk you guys through it so you know what it's about because when you're in there, it's going to be dark, it's going to be scary, it's going to be hot. So, if something happens, you know where all the exits are already. So, you walk through the whole building. Okay? And you always follow your, your rainbow. Okay? Whatever he or she says, you do. All right? All right, we got uh, a bunch of elected officials, right? Yeah. Raise your hand, elected officials. All right, by the way, we got city council members, right? This is the fun stuff. But as you go through this today, I want you to think about the dangers that the firefighters face, the cost of the equipment that you're going to use, and the education that goes behind what they do every day. You're probably going to have two, three, four people around you all the time, very, very controlled. They do this at 2 o'clock in the morning, hostile situations, uh, firefighters getting shot at now, um, there are more and more communicable diseases, uh, the cancer is running rampant in our fire service. Think about some of those things as you go through it today, and I, I will guarantee you, you will have a better uh, respect and better understanding of what these men and women do uh, on a daily basis. Very ready for the day. Green team's got this. We're the mean, lean, green machine. Ready to tackle the fire. <laughs> We're having a great time, man. You all should be here with us. This is going to be a fun, fun day, and I'm looking forward to really, really learn a lot about what our firefighters go through every single day. Oh my, I know for sure that I don't ever want to be a firefighter. <laughs> it is going to be fun and maybe a little scary and I'm going to remember to debrief. That's what I've been told, breathe. So let me practice now. But this is amazing. Definitely profound respect for this profession, even more than I had before. So let's see what happens. Hope I make it through the end of the day. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a fantastic opportunity for your local elected officials to come experience the, the trials, the tribulations, the successes of what it takes to be a firefighter here in uh, Broward County, Florida. Um, Chief Tommy has done an excellent job. Um, I've seen these numerous times, and i got to tell you, this is just a, a, a very, very successful event. The, the weather and the events are, are starting to wear on them a little bit, but I think their, uh, their enthusiasm and um, you know, their excitement for this is uh, going to get them through the day. I will guarantee you they'll have a whole different perspective of what it takes to be a firefighter. It's the best way to, to let, the, you know, let your constituents know and let your elected officials know exactly what their dollars are going toward. Hi, I'm Captain Mike Pagano from the Fire Department. Well, today we started with the basics of vehicle extrications. Um, and we had to explain uh, what we do when we first arrive on scene, and that is making sure that the scene is safe for the rescuers first, as our safety is top priority. Then we want to make sure that the vehicle is stable and it's um, free of any hazards. From that point, we move on to securing the patient. And doing that depends on the damage to the vehicle. But the, the, the normal concept is that we break all the glass from the vehicle we then make a paramedic into the vehicle to stabilize the patient and advise of the type of injury. And then from that point, we remove the vehicle from the patient. You do not want to breathe. This glass becomes very small, like dust. Okay, you don't want to start cutting it. So you don't want to breathe this glass. Because otherwise you can't get a little bit of a problem.
Cut this, it produces dust. If it gets in your lungs, it's hazardous for us. So we're gonna show you how we can cut this glass. I know it's broken, but you'll see the material. Uh, this is a, a new product. This is a, a laminated glass cutter. Remember that glass over there was tempered? This is laminated. It's very easy to use, battery operated, and I'm gonna show you how it, if you wanna come over here, I'll, I'll get you. So it's very easy to use. Yeah, you notice, you notice the saw. glass. Yeah. If you're patient, yeah. over right here. I can't use this saw because I might hit the patient in the head as I come through the, the glass like this. This tool does not hurt your skin, but yet, give it a try. The Miramar guys showed you a, what we call a purchase point on the other side. I've showed you a, on this side a, a little different purchase point. I call it working the V. We're going we're gonna to create a letter V here and the V leads to the attachment point, which is down here by the nader pin. So we're gonna start spreading this door using the window frame to try and move that door away from the B pillar. Mm -hmm. it, it does, no, stay right here, that's fine. Just, yep, turn right here, right here, and there's your instruction. Close it up, drop it down. Stay parallel with the ground. Close it up, drop it down again. Stay parallel with the ground. what you're doing, you're pulling this part away from the V-pillar, we're using the window frame to our advantage. Okay, now close it up, put it right in here. There you go. I'm sure you haven't done this before because you're already in the field. Are you serious? This is your first uh, day? Keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming, keep coming. All right, we're starting to tear. We started to tear here, and once it tears, it's like a potato chip bag. It continues to tear. So if we close it up and sneak this arm right on this P-post, that's where our structure is. So close it up a little bit. Just come in. Just a little bit. Close it up. Close it up. Close it up. Broward County Fire Academy with the City of Miramar Fire Department and each exercise that we've gone through so far has been grueling. Uh, it has definitely opened my eyes as to uh, what our firefighters go through in a day uh, dealing with uh, public safety on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm proud to be here today and um, 
glad to have been afforded this opportunity. Kevin Nugent, Captain with Miramar Fire Rescue. This is a burn building that we use for simulated fires for on-duty firefighters throughout the county and firefighters training to go into the fire service. It's a gas-fed building. We bring people in through different scenarios. There's a bedroom simulation, a living room simulation fire, a storage room. It offers us the ability to train them tactics, getting to the fire, seat of the fire, and providing life safety to the communities they serve. got in there, we wanted to clear it, we said you could see it. This is gas fed building, it's pretty good complete combustion, meaning there's no real smoke in there. All that smoke that you saw was Hollywood smoke. Um, typically it'd be a lot hotter and a lot bright, uh, it'd build a lot faster because remember, like I said last night, nothing's built out of just wood anymore. Everything's uh, plastics, fiberglasses, so they burn hotter, brighter, and they build quicker. It was amazing. Uh, I tell you, we felt safe at all times. We have uh, an incredible crew here that's been taking care of us and giving us everything we need to know before we go into the scenarios. And um, hats off to them, they've been terrific. Um, and as far as the experience, uh, second to none. I never thought I was gonna be walking into a fire the way that we did and, and working a nozzle, those kinds of things. So um, it's been a, a real life uh, awakening experience, let's just put it that way. I, I would certainly do it again, um, but of course we're still through half the training, so I might reconsider that in a little bit. My name is Faye Munnings. I'm Assistant City Manager at the City of Miramar. Today has taught me so much, and as I've come in as Assistant City Manager, understanding what the firefighters do, understanding that they actually make these full sacrifices every day, really puts a different perspective for me to understand what they go through and what they need. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was a wonderful experience. It was, of course, extremely hot. Um, and my knee still hurt from kneeling, but um, it was an awesome experience. I, I, I take my, ha my hats off to these guys for doing this on a daily basis. I'm Kathleen Gunn, Assistant City Manager for the City of Miramar. Uh, it was an incredible experience to be in that burning building and to understand what our firefighters are doing every day. And I thank the Miramar Fire Department for all of their hospitality today, for showing us around, and for the work that they do every day. As much as I work out, this is nothing compared to it. I think they were excited. I think it was a big eye-opener for some of the people that came out today. It's been real enjoyable for all of us. I, I think it uh, establishes a lot of lines of communication for us, opens a lot of lines of trust. They, uh, they have to trust us when they go in, so we make sure we get them in safe and out safe. And uh, it's been a big eye-opener for everybody through a co cooperative, constructive working relationship. Uh, I think this is a great program that we're offering. As you heat liquid up, it turns to a gas. If you have a closed container, that gas in there creates pressure in that tank and eventually it explodes very violently. Okay, anything can blab it. If it was water, it would turn to steam, increase in pressure and explode, right? But nothing like LP, right? So we're gonna consider this 
an LP tank fire. We're gonna we're gonna show you how to move in with no fire initially. We're gonna back out and then we're gonna put our gear on and we'll we'll, we'll do it for real. Okay? So let's open them up and, and see what we got here. What I want you guys to do, move them in closer. Move them in closer. Move them in closer. This way. He's gonna have a hand on your shoulder. As we move in, I want your water to do this at the top of the tank. That's cooling the tank so it doesn't blevy or blow up. As we get closer, you're gonna widen this with this, put your hand right there. You're gonna widen that, okay? As we get, we're gonna get this close to the tank. Okay. At that point, it's gonna be real wide. Okay. All right, let's get that off the tank. You got about this much of reality right now, okay? The pressure on this is about 50 psi, which is half of what it normally would be. I was on the front of the hose for the first exercise. It was very um, hot, uh, very intense, but it was a lot of fun. And then the second exercise, I was on the back of the hose, which was a little bit more difficult because the pressure was kind of pushing me back. I cannot imagine uh, one or two guys having to hold a hose like that for probably up to a half hour, 45 minutes. It just gives me a new appreciation for what these guys go through when they have a fire like that. No, it was very, very rewarding to go through what they go through. One of the things that we like to emphasize is the fact that you know, there are a lot of tools that are out there that make our job a lot easier and more effective. Uh, for example, we have things like the thermal imaging camera that sense body heat. Uh, that way, you know, in a, in a normal circumstance, we would go in there blindly because of the smoke. We can't really see anything. But with a thermal imaging camera, we can actually see body heat and the heat if there's a fire. Uh, other things that are very, very important to us as well is communication. And usually we have a lot of trouble with the radios and uh, how we can communicate with each other inside buildings. So there's a lot of technology out there that makes it easier for us to do that. If somebody gets lost, we can't really communicate where we're at and that could potentially um, lead to somebody's either death or survival. So you managed to go in on the yeah. first building to a rescue, search and rescue. Okay. Miramar Mayor Wayne Messam. Going in for the rescue, uh, very dark environment with smoke. Uh, we were on our hands and knees looking for victims. Um, it was really a challenging exercise. Um, the adrenaline, not knowing exactly where you're going to find the victim. In fact, you're crawling on your knees. Your knees are hurting. You're not knowing where you're going to go. And knowing that 
there's only minutes or maybe moments between life and death in that scenario. So it really puts you into the, you know, into a perspective of understanding what our fire rescue goes through when they walk into or come to a home or come to a structure, knowing that there are lives in a burning building. Uh, well, it's a great experience. Now I know what these uh, brave men and women go through when they get into a fire situation. It's, uh, it's a lot of work just wearing the gear by itself. When you have to take that equipment and you don't see anything in here, a whole bunch of uncertainty, and then you got to try to navigate yourself around the walls and stuff. Nowhere in the training that I had in the military compared to what we're just going through here. And this is light. I respect, I respect the fire department. I'm very happy that I'm doing it. It gives me a different perspective as to what the firefighters do every day in, in our community, same our residents. So I'm really, really happy that I'm doing it. My hat's off to the fire department and so glad we took part in this exercise. The dummy all the way up. Um, yeah, it's exhilarating. So yeah, I feel my, my heart rate is certainly heightened right now. But you can't, you can't feel good when you found a victim, so we found a victim. Yeah, found yeah. a victim. I found a foot. <laughs> yeah, that's good. My name is uh, Bo Rosenblatt. I'm the medical director of the Miramar Heart Fire Department. Um, I've always been uh, focused on the medical side, less on the firefighting side, so it's the first uh, hands-on opportunity that I had to uh, really get to experience some of the physical toll that takes you know place on the body when they're fighting the fire, the kind of conditions that they go through, uh, whether it's the heat exhaustion or the physical exertion required just to pull victims out, uh, the type of environments that they put their bodies uh, into where they're uh, at risk uh, for their own safety and uh, the kind of tools they need to make sure that they can do a great job. So it's been a fantastic experience. It's exhilarating, it's eye-opening, and uh, certainly I feel proud to be part of the team. Uh, and um, hats off to the chief and to the entire fire department for what they do every day for us. Overall, I think they did a great job. Um, I know they were able to locate the victim, which is very rewarding for them, something they look forward to doing. They were able to pull the victim out and assess the victim. So I think they did a fantastic job and they got to experience what it's like to uh, go through the life of a firefighter, search and rescue for one day. Those of you that can make it in a flashover feel like you're up for it, all you do is sit there and witness it when it does get hot. Our idea is to get you to show the, all the different stages of fire and how they progress. And it's a training tool that we use for our firefighters to recognize so we can avoid that phenomenon called flashover. If you're not in gear, you have no chance of survival in flashover. If you're in gear, when it's brand new, you have a, pro uh, a possibility of surviving, not, not an assurance. I want you to understand what you're going to be going into. simulated room we actually drop the rest of the house below that one room so we can see how that fire progresses when we don't get water on it immediately okay we have particle board in here with hay and wood all right you will, you will get to see the pyrolization and how it goes through the process of burning we're not going to have you rotate off the nozzles we want to kind of limit the amount of, of because of time constraints and, and having you move too much we will rotate you periodically because radiant heat as we discussed yesterday is equal in all directions and you're going to feel it when you're at the front. Your buddy is your best friend. You know why? Because they are a human shield. Tuck in behind them. All right? You're going to tuck in and they'll, they'll absorb that radiant heat for you. And we'll periodically, you tell me you're hot, we'll rotate you to the back of the line. Just remember to scoot up. What you'll notice is everybody tries to kind of escape as they move out. Remember the three types of heat transfer we talked about. Conduction, convection, radiation. Conduction is when our knees are heating up on the ground. We can kind of, we can go to this. We cannot do this in here. This is unacceptable. We cannot sit on our butt if we have to have an emergency evacuation. We see that rollover. We want to keep the fire in front of us. 
we typically will do just a combination attack like we did in there once we get to the seat of the fire. But if it starts coming down the gangways or down the hallways, we give it three quick blasts of water, and it reduces the amount of steam we're subjected to, it lets us advance another 10 feet to where we can hit it again, and keeps that fire to its a point of origin, where it started. Because we want to keep the fire back at where it's at. We don't want everything in the room to heat up to its ignition temperature, resulting in the flashover. So while we call this a flashover simulator, what it really is is a rollover simulator. We wouldn't be able to do a flashover simulator. We'd run out of people after we started killing them, right? Because everybody being here, everything catches on fire, all the combustibles, including <coughs> us. We have great fire resistive materials. They're not fireproof. We're ready to get toasty. Well, I, I felt like a casserole today. It was extremely hard and no experience has ever would have ever prepared me for that. So that was something I couldn't imagine myself. So the fact that somebody can conceptualize this and put this into it as a training tool is amazing. Inside here, it got extremely hot. My, my hands were the first to go get real hot. My back, and then it started to get real sweaty. But if you stay calm and breathe, and stay low, that's, the, that's how you survive. You gotta stay low and stay calm. You know, these folks here do a really hard job. Uh, you know, maybe when you watch them uh, during their days and they're just, you know, driving around doing rescue, that's one thing, but man, when they're in here doing the real deal, it's the real deal. I just could not have um, imagined that today would be the kind of day that it has been um, between the heat and the water hoses, the pressure of the water hoses and having to save a body out of a burning building, it has been incredibly um, interesting and knowledgeable. I think it's a very high stress environment and I think we all have a newfound respect for firefighters after today's activities. I mean, you, you don't really understand what happens when we call the firefighters and we expect them to be there, be in gear and perform. I can tell you right now, it's not an easy job, but it was a very good experience and I just think Miramar Fire Rescue for inviting us here and for allowing us to experience this. I kind of had an idea of some of the activities that we would do, but there's no way to anticipate the stresses your body goes through in that situation. You know, you're on your, your hands, your knees, um, you, you really can't think about yourself because you're trying to find that victim. But when it's all done, um, you know, your body does tell you what you just went through. So you just hope that at the end of the exercise that you've actually found a person and found them alive and kept them alive. I still know that I don't have what it takes to be a firefighter. My hat goes off to them. What an amazing job and somebody has to do it and it's nice to know that we're in good hands in the city of Miramar. Um, I just um, tip my hat off to the fire rescue. So thank you to all of our firefighters. You have my utmost respect. <laughs> thank you. My name is Keith Tommy and the fire rescue chief for the city of Miramar. You don't really get the effect until you're here, you have the gear on, you see how much it weighs, how much it restricts you, um, and you don't realize how labor intensive this is, how hot it can be, um, you can't see anything so you're just feeling around. So I think they underestimated that part on how labor intensive and how hard it was going to be. Our point was to give them um, what it's like to be a firefighter, so I'm hoping to try to do this uh, every other year.